Coax, and this will be a single PL259 on a single coax line. What you will need is one PL259, which consists of these two parts, and an adapter. Lead and a knife, preferably a sharp one. From the end, you'll cut back approximately three quarters of an inch, bend it over your finger, and cut in stopping when you hit the braid. Bending it over will help you not cut into the braid. Once you have the three quarter or so inch piece of the sleeve removed, you'll then put the adapter in place. You want the adapter basically stopping right here at the edge of your sleeve. Okay? Right here. We'll pull this coax back like so. Wrap it clockwise. Keep it out of the threads. Okay, I'm holding this adapter in place so it does not move forward or back. Next, approximately 3 sixteenths of an inch from the end of the adapter, cut in and stop when you hit the center conductor. Do not cut that center conductor. Twist and remove the insulation. That was a polyfoam dielectric that separates the center conductor from the ground. Next, you will want to tin, is what it is called, the center conductor, coating it completely with solder. You'll want to heat it until the solder flows like water. Next, this collar will go on normally first and then this piece of your PL259 goes on next. Hold it, hold your collar in place or, or your adapter, hold your adapter in place, screw on the PL259, do not let it move forward or backwards, either way. Hold this adapter in place. Now, before I tighten it, I grab a pair of pliers, grab onto the adapter, and bend it over. That will keep this adapter from moving. Next, you'll tighten down the PL259. Grab it with another pair of pliers here, not here. Here may put um, deep scarring and keep the collar from actually screwing in place. So you'll grab it here, tighten down. Once you've got it tight, You'll take the collar, screw it in place. That should go back and forth freely. You have a lip on the end of this PL259. If you look closely, it has a little cut in it to where it has a, like a, a little lip on the bottom. You'll take a pair of dikes, cut it even, the center conductor even, and fill up the center conductor, this part of the PL259, you'll just fill it up. It is kosher to heat it for a moment and then pull off. Grab some more solder, heat it for a moment, pull off. You don't want to get it too hot because you can actually damage the PL259 if you get it too hot. I'm soldering at 775 degrees. If you have a temperature adjustment on your soldering gun, set it for this temperature, 775. Now, it is completely full. Do not move or shake that end for a good 30 seconds. If you get any excessive solder on the outside of this, let it cool first and then take a knife and scrape it all the way around and get all of the excess solder off of the end. The final step, if you have an ohm meter, is to check the continuity. You basically want to make sure that from the center conductor to this part, you have no continuity. 
zero continuity. So from here to here, no continuity. From this point to the opposite, you will have continuity, and from ground to ground, you will also have continuity. So this is ground in the center conductor to the center conductor on the opposite end, you do want to show continuity. And then from here to the outside jacket of the PL259, you do want to show continuity on the other end as well, but not from the center conductor to the, to the outer portion here. No continuity. And that wraps it up.